We did it. Oh my god, we did it. We did it. We pulled the trigger, man. We got rid of Dave Caldwell. Thank you, Shad Khan. Thank you. Oh my god. I seriously can't believe it. I, I I can't believe it happened. I did not think that this would happen. I didn't especially I did not think he was gonna be gone before Doug Marone. But finally, since Dave Caldwell has been the GM since 2013, we have finally got him out of here. Oh my god, this is I've been I've been wanting this to happen for at least like two years now. I've been wanting it to happen since I think 2018. Oh, we finally did it, man. We got this porous GM out of the building, and he was just... You can make all the excuses for Dave Caldwell as you want. You know, you can call it the 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 shot or the, the Tom Coughlin effect. He, hit, he has good third-round picks, whatever you want to say, man. But he just... Look at the roster right now, man. Look at where the roster is. We're 1-10. This, this roster is horrible, and... Since 2013, he's only had one season that wasn't a double-digit loss season. And it looks like it was just a complete fluke year. This guy, really, the, the, there's just two horrible things about Dave Caldwell as a GM that we see from the fan base's perspective. It's been his first-round picks, and it's been the fact that he has never hit on a quarterback. We can talk about the first-round picks. 2013, Luke Jokel, not in the NFL anymore. 2014, Blake Bortles, bust at quarterback. 2015, Dante Fowler Jr. 2016, Jalen Ramsey. 2017, Leonard Fournette. 2018, Taven Bryan. 2019, Josh Allen. And then, you know, 2020, obviously still undecided with CJ Henderson and Clavon Chason. But really, the only two draft picks he really nailed were draft picks that any of us could have made. Any of us could have picked Jayla Ramsey and Josh Allen, but when it comes to the outside the box thinking, who are we going to draft at number 29 overall? Taven Bryant, horrible pick. You know what I mean? When the Jaguars are backed up a little bit in a draft, like we just, Jaguars never been able to nail it. I mean, we took Fournette over Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. We took Taven Bryant over Lamar Jackson. And it's, it's, and honestly, I think what, what, made Shad Khan make this decision was starting to be the perception that has been growing around Shad Khan that the fans have been saying that we don't think that he cares. You know, fan base fans don't think that that he really cares about the, the team just because, you know, he keeps these players around and, you know, he doesn't make many like public statements or anything and um I mean just look at the state of the team right now, but you know, I think it's similar with Tom Coughlin. Like Tom Coughlin, uh, when when they got rid of him was when the NFLPA put out a statement about him, and then he just got rid of him. And then you know, with everyone, including me, I mean, I made a video about a month ago, over a month ago, just a direct message to Shad Khan. It got a few thousand views, where I basically said, "Look, fire the GM." And then now that the GM's fired, Doug Marone's out of here. I mean, you're not going to bring in a new GM and say, oh, you got to keep the coaching staff. No. Doug Marone's going to be out of here. He's going to be allowed to finish out the rest of the year, then he's out. And this is, you know, not only did, because obviously I've been a big proponent of the team tanking. You know, I've been open about it. I've been saying, look, I don't want to win these games. I want the game to be close, kind of like the game today was against the Browns. Great game, but they wind up losing. This is the way I want to be because not only do we get the secure top draft pick, but it also shows to, you know, to Shad Khan, like, look, like, look at the losses. We've lost 10 straight games. Do something about it. You know, I mean, the Jaguars were sitting here and they were, what, like four and seven right now. Does he make this decision? Does he get rid of them? You know what I mean? Like, if we win some of these close games, like, does does Dave Caldwell stay? Like, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a big question mark if he actually does stay, but... Oh my God, I'm just I'm just so elated, and I was I was worried that the Jaguars were going to keep him around. You know, a big reason was because Dave Caldwell made moves this year like he was tanking. I'm sitting here thinking like, hmm, if Dave Caldwell is in a you know is in a like 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 a make or break year. You know, I mean, is he, if he's on a hot seat, why is he cutting all these players? Why is he trading AJ Boye, Calais Campbell? Uh, Ronnie Harrison, all these guys. Like, why is he building the roster to be so bad? 
Um, if he is just going to, why is he? Ha- why do we have the most cap space in the NFL next year? If if he's on a hot seat, you know, why would he do all that just to give the next general manager a lot of stuff to work with? You know what I mean? I was questioning that, but you know, I think that Shad Khan at the beginning of the year, like he honestly thought, like, look, like I know we're not gonna be that great this year, but we'll bring in a new GM next year, or like we'll, we'll keep him around, probably bring in a new head coach. But I think just the way this season went, being one in ten, and just the fan base's reactions. Like, I don't know how they sell to the fan base. Like, look, we're bringing back Dave Caldwell, Doug Marone. How do you sell that to this fan base? How do you tell a fan base, look, we're committed to winning. We're going to, but we're going to bring back these guys and they're going to, you know, they're going to finally have a good draft. They're going to finally have a good team. Like, you can't sell that, man. You cannot sell that. But look at the Jaguars now. I think there's four, there's like four GM spots opening in the NFL right now. There's, there's the Falcons. Uh, the Detroit Lions has fired their guy, and I believe there is one more spot. But this is uh, in the Houston. Yeah, Houston Texans. They, they they need the GM. But this is by far, by far the most attractive spot. You know, if the Jaguars lose out, you know, which they probably will. There's five games left. Which game? You know, we might beat the Bears. I don't know. But we're, we're playing teams with winning records. Like, the Jaguars probably had the number two overall pick in the draft. Hey, new GM, go out and get your quarterback. Oh, yeah, and you also have another first-round pick. Also, you have two first-round picks. You have, you know, all these all these different picks in the upcoming draft. You know what I mean? Most draft picks. You also have, um, you know, you're, you have the most cap room in the NFL. So go spend money on whoever you want to get to build your team. Also, you get your choice of head coach. Bring over any head coach that you want. How is this not? And you look, at, you look at the flip side thing. Let's stay in the AFC South. Look at the Texans. They have no picks in the first two rounds. They had to do some moving around when it comes to the cap. Um, they're not in a great situation. I mean, they had Deshaun Watson. That's what they got to sell the team on. Uh, but, man, like the Jaguars right now, they should be able to hire any GM they want. And I'll probably go into more GM talk like about different candidates, although it's harder to find candidates just because they're – they're all kind of hiding in front offices, different places. But, you know, I mean, obviously the guy I've been wanting is Bucky Brooks. Bucky Brooks is in the building. He does, like, Jaguars radio stuff. I mean, you know, I would love him. Like, he's got to think good head on his shoulders. But, obviously, you know, there's some different kind of talking about what we can do at the GM spot. But, man, like, I'm just I'm just so happy right now. Like, Dave Caldwell was gone. I was so worried that he was going to stay around. So, I mean... What's going to happen with this team now? We're going to finish the year. You know, Doug Brown's going to be fired. And then, you know, all of a sudden we get to redo everything. You know what I mean? We get to, we get to start from square one. Um, the new GM, they're going to be able to go out there and get their quarterback. And then, oh, man, what an, what an exciting time, man. It's, it's, I woke up this morning. I did a Browns video, and I was just, uh, I was just not feeling it. I was so unenthused about the game with starting Mike Glennon and stuff like that. And then now we got Dave Caldwell out of the building. Man, that was big. That was big. I was I was worried Shad Khan was going to keep him around, but now comes a hard part, man. Shad Khan, he has to find his guy. You know, it's tough being that Shad Khan is in that spot, um, because I don't know how much I trust him. Hopefully, he brings in a consulting firm or like something to help him hire a guy, because obviously he doesn't really know the X's and O's. But, uh it's a great day. It's a great day, guys, to be a Jaguar fan. You know what I mean? Just, uh, I mean, the rest of the thing, man, just keep on losing. Honestly, keep on losing. Secure that number two pick so we can get Justin Fields. Um, go out there and, you know, we have another first-round pick, probably in a 20 somewhere from the Rams. And, man, it's – and we got talent on the team, man. We got some players, Josh Allen, C.J. Henderson, James Robinson, um, you're, the the next GM, the next head coach, they have some guys to work with. I think the Jaguars can be as good as next year. Next year, 2021, I think the Jags can be good. I mean, the Miami Dolphins were in the same exact spot last year as the Jaguars. They were the tanking team. Um, they were the team without the quarterback. They got their quarterback. They're turning things around. They have a winning record over there. The Jaguars, especially in this AFC South, man, there's no powerhouses here. The Jaguars can be good next year. What a time. What a time, man. But let me know what you guys all think, man. Dave Caldwell is out of here. I think his final record was like 33 and like 89 or something like horrible. 
Horrible, horrible, horrible. But guys, I will be doing a call-in show tonight, so it's going to be a lot of fun. You guys can let your voice be heard over there. Also, guys, I am. Go ahead and join me on the Flick Chat app. We'll be over there kind of talking about it. Um, hit the links down below, man. Win a free Josh Allen jersey. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at UCF Jaguar. And as Engraving Viz says, like Dave Caldwell, I'm out.